spiritual world, and all you people have probably been in the spiritual world for a while. Generally, you don't hear of Vedanta, or, or Vedanta doesn't find you until you have knocked around in the spiritual world for a while. Um, basically, though, when you enter into the spiritual world, you're told that enlightenment is experiential. That's 99% of the teachers <coughs> tell you that enlightenment is a, is, is a particular kind of experience that's basically very, it's a very different from a normal everyday experience of suffering that we encounter. It's, it's presented as, the Buddhists for example, presented as nirvana. And you know all the associations that nirvana uh, elicits in your mind. Bliss and peace. Uh, vana actually means a flame. And near means not. So it means a, a state, a flameless state. A state that's free of passion and uh, desire. Free of desire. That's actually how the Buddha uh, Supposedly, we don't know exactly what precisely the Buddha said, but that's, that's a reasonable uh, statement about uh, what Buddha said we're to achieve or to attain. And he said there's a, a path to attaining that state. That's called the Eightfold Path, and it has, it's very similar to the Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga means the eight-limbed yoga path. Um, it's the same, similar eight <coughs> steps. And the pr purpose of yoga, as most people uh, understand it, is to uh, gain samadhi. Samadhi is, is, is considered, is, is formulated as a state of mind in general. Uh, that you can attain by practicing yoga. A kundalini yoga. Kundal, there's an energy that's locked inside your body and you do various practices and that energy will be awakened and it will leave your body and merge with the higher self. Your that shakti or that energy will merge with the higher self and you'll enter into a non-dual state of, of blissful, orgasmic experience. <laughs> right? So I've, you know, there's a little variations, but basically that's the idea. Um, transcendental meditation. You'll chant some mantras, whatever they are, your mind will what? Transcend. It will leave your body and, and mind and it will what? Go up and you'll enter into a, a transcendental state where everything is peaceful and clear and not attached and free, where you're free. You're free in this state. And you'll do that by chanting these mantras or whatever the practices are. Everybody's got there's, there's thousands of experiential paths. There are just many ways. Some people think, you know, smoking dope is a way to get transcendental. Om Shiva Shankar. <laughs> <laughs> and off you go in the, in the high state. Or ayahuasca, they like the ayahuasca now. There you're going to drink this awful tasting oh, yeah. juice from the bark of a tree with sitting around chanting with shamans in, in the Amazon jungle and phew, off you go in your spirit thing and all, and, 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 I don't know. Now all these, all of these experiential paths um, have a certain, are based upon a certain assumption And that assumption is that reality is a duality. 
again, we've got a couple of words here. We need to, these are, these are real important words. Just like the first teaching, the, the, sec, the second teaching, we need to understand what duality and non-duality mean. Because you're going to see these words all the time appearing in our teaching and elsewhere. And when you, if you're reading it or, or studying or going to any other satsangs and hearing people talk uh, about spiritual life, then you should understand what duality and what non-duality means. So we're going to I'm going to define it for you very carefully. Duality is the belief that the subject and the object are separate. It's, it's, it's a belief. Uh, experience seems to support that belief. When I, when I look at my experience, it, it seems very clear to me that I'm here and you're there. <coughs> and it seems very clear to you that you're there and I'm here. So, you are not me, I am not you. You're there, I'm here, I'm there, you're here. That's duality. Non-duality means there is no difference. Duality means difference. There is no split, no separation between what? The subject and the objects, between me and you. In duality, I'm the subject and you're the object. Or you're the subject and I'm the object. But non-duality says that you're not there and I'm not here. Both you and me are what? Experiences taking place in awareness. We'll explain how this works. All the experiential paths are based upon the notion that reality is a duality. Important to understand this. And Vedanta says it looks like reality is a duality, but it's actually a non duality. You can see the, the, all the problems that you immediately get. Huh? See, you've got another, another, another big paradox and a contradiction here, apparently contradictory statements from our own experience. Our experience says it looks like reality is a duality, and the teaching says, no, that's not really true. You're actually incorrect when you believe that I'm here and you're there. That's not really how it is, but it seems that way. So you see, how are we going to get these two notions, these two ideas, how are we going to get them together? That's what a teaching does. A teaching resolves apparent contradictions. I can't, I can tell you that this is a duality, a non-duality, but it doesn't help. It doesn't resolve your doubt for you. It, 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 the, most of the modern teachers just tell you. They don't supply you with the logic that's required for you to see, to understand what, how duality and non-duality are just one thing. So, I'm going to, going to explain this. To, this is a very interesting teaching. It's a very important teaching. It's really the essence of our teaching, and it's called the location of objects teaching. We're going to use, uh, we're going to try to determine where objects exist. What is the, now, where are these glasses? In my hand. Fair enough. Yeah, let's, let's say they're in my hand. Something you clever people, huh? <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> now these, normally, that's how you would say it. If, if you said, 
anything other than needed, uh, made any statement other than the fact that, other than the statement that these objects are in my hand, people would say you were a little goofy, <laughs> wouldn't they? They think they'd call the little men in the white coats and <laughs> trundle you off to be medicated. <laughs> Is it? Because huh? <coughs> normally that's how it looks. But Vedanta says these these glasses are not in your hand, in my hand. They're in me. Now what does that statement mean? How how are we going to resolve these two statements? Well, the way we resolve these statements is by analyzing experience. Just like in the first teaching we analyzed right, the, the object called joy or happiness, and we determined that what? From our own experience that the happiness can't be coming from the object, it has to be coming from here. Now we're going to analyze the location of objects and we're going to, find, we're going to come to a similar conclusion. You watch and see. Now, for you to experience this object, you need light. There's light in this room. So light strikes on the object, and then what? <coughs> that object, the, the stimuli from the, the light stimuli, the little light rays, refract or reflect through your eye. There's a little hole in your eye here called a pupil. They, they pass, those light rays pass through your eyeball, your, your eye, and they appear on your retina, the back of your eye. They appear on the back of it as what? You know, let's wait, let's get these people out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, they're not huh? They're not there, No, but I mean, they're, 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 they're there, you're here. They're, 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 they're not there, they're, they're not there, they're here. You're right, they are here. <laughs> there you go. Huh? They aren't there. They were here, weren't they? Huh? Where did I experience those people? Here. Huh? Yeah. So, we'll just run through this. Good point. I mean, good, very good. The, the, this object is inverted when it passes through my eyes and appears upside down on my ret on the retina, the back part of my eye. And then these the, the lights, the, the information, the light, the stimuli, light stimuli, pass down my optic nerve and they're reversed and I experience them where? In my mind, in my subtle body. The stimuli here, these are stimuli. They come off the objects. This is, a, these, this is a symbol of any material object. So the stimuli pass through my eyes, and then they appear here in the subtle body where they're experienced or known. Isn't it? If, if, it, 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 we got to get to, if you're, exper if, if you're experiencing the glasses here, what's the problem with that? Then the first person to get here uh, is going to obscure the experience of everybody, every, everybody else, isn't it? Because they'll be blocking. If you're over here experiencing the glasses, then the people behind you can't see the glasses, can they? But the fact is, everybody in this room is experiencing glasses now, aren't they? Without journeying over here to the object at all. You don't have to come over to the object to get... Uh, the objects appear, uh, and they're what? And they appear in the subject, in the subtle body, or in the mind, as glasses knowledge, or glasses experience. So the instrument of experience is called the subtle body. That's where you experience things. You're not experiencing things out there. You're experiencing things in here, in your mind. We'll call it the mind for now. Now, how, how does this work? It, is, is the, are the glasses in the mind separate? 
In other words, is the image of the glasses floating kind of above the mind a little bit? Now, is, is, are the glasses, is the surface of the mind and the glasses separate? No. You don't have to, the mind, you don't need a bridge between the glasses and the mind. You don't have to take a little jump to get to see, experience the glasses. The, the mind takes the form of the glasses. What knowledge do you have? What experience do you have? Hand knowledge. Hand experience. You're experiencing my hand. Now you're experiencing glasses. Now you're experiencing a hand. Now you're experiencing glasses. Now you're experiencing a hand. Isn't it? Has the mind, has, how does the <coughs> mind do this? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Huh? Uh, when, when, the, when you experience the, the, the hand, is there still a glasses thought in your mind? Huh? Is it like on a computer screen? You know, on the computer screen when you leave the image on the, in the old days, it doesn't do it anymore, but in the old days, you couldn't leave an image sitting on the screen of the computer very long. It would etch or burn itself into the screen. And then, huh? But the mind's not like that, is it? Huh? As soon as I take my hand in the glasses, huh? The mind, assuming that the, the senses are operating open, the mind takes the form of the glasses. And the, the mind doesn't have any form. So it's like water or air. Air can take any shape, or water can take any shape. And so what the mind, this we call it the subtle body or the mind, it can take any shape and so it can know or experience anything. It can take the shape of a feeling that arises in it without reference to the physical objects. It can take the shape of a thought or an idea. It can take any shape. It can take the shape of a, of a god or a demon or a devil. It can take the shape of a sun or the moon. It can take any shape that you want. It's completely... And so what are your experience... Now, if there's, no, if there's no actual separation between the glasses and the mind, my experience of the glasses and the glasses, there's no... Now look, okay, somebody may say, well, but, but they're over here. Okay, but come over <coughs> here and start experiencing the glasses. Say, what are the glasses made out of? What, huh? What, what are the glasses made? What, what's this? Atoms, protons, and neutrons, right? Isn't it? Are you actually experiencing glasses? Or are you experiencing atoms, protons, and neutrons? And what are the atoms, protons, and neutrons made out of? Space. Huh? Quarks and mesons and pi mesons and bosons and so forth. And what's that made out of? Space. Hmm? So am I actually experiencing anything here? Apart from what? The image in my mind of the object? The apparent image, the appearance of the... No, I'm not. Science tells us. <coughs> even, even particles, what? Even the particles break down, don't they? Into waves. Mm -hmm. You can't even tell if you're experiencing waves or particles or little <coughs> dots. Sometimes it looks like waves, sometimes it looks like particles, which means what? It's not, anything, it's not actually an object that's there, solid, that you can grab that you can say actually exists outside in a particular form. Now, just as the mind is not separate from the, from the objects that appear in it, how far are you from your mind? Zero. Zero. Yeah. yeah, zero. 
zero. If, if you're, there's no separation between you and your mind, can you find a line? Can you, can you see, can, is there any, any lines or barriers between you and your mind? And can you find any barriers between your mind and the objects here? No, you can't, can you? Then how far are you from this object? Huh? It's me! Yeah, isn't it? That's what non-duality means. Now, we got to still have a little problem here. Why? Because uh, reality, the subject and the object, are not separate. Now, wh what, and, but we're told this, huh? We're told that when, when you're experiencing non, when you're experiencing duality, then you're not experiencing non-duality. So you have to move from, this is this gentleman's question earlier, he said, you have to move from non-duality to duality. Hmm? And then you look at, what, <coughs> then you look at non-duality from this point of view. Now, is there a way to move from non-duality? If you move from, from duality to non-duality, <clears throat> then what happens? Then duality's got to disappear, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. huh? Either you're experiencing <clears throat> duality or you're experiencing non-duality. Is that true? 